Now, it might be easy to forget, but in the WA Parliament, uh, we have currently two MPs from the Legalised Cannabis uh, Party. And for the past couple of years, they've been trying to live up to their name and get cannabis legalised. Now, it's a bit of a tough task, given that the McGowan government has an overwhelming uh, majority... And uh, they've repeatedly said they have absolutely no intention of legalising cannabis. But the leader of the party, Dr Brian Walker, you'll hear from him soon, he's not one to give up. And today he's come to the table with an argument of legalising cannabis on economic grounds. He's got the modelling uh, that has calculated the economic benefit to WA if cannabis was legalised. And it's quite a figure. Uh, You'll hear it soon. Um, I want you to have a listen to Dr Brian Walker. Uh, listen to the arguments, legalising cannabis, uh, at least partly on economic grounds. Are you on board with this? Do you need more convincing? Where do you stand on all of this? Uh, Daryl Abroom says, at least it will cut out the black market. Uh, this from Fred in Denmark, no uh, to legalising dope. That would put it in the hands of corporations instead of the everyday person. It's Fred's response. 0448 922 Dr Brian Walker, hello to you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, pleasure. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So who did you get to do the analysis and what sort of qualifications did they have in this field? Well, this is a groundbreaking work and so I couldn't do it myself. We gave this to an expert in the field, Dr. Farhad Mohammed. He's a lecturer at UWA who has uh, excellent uh, credentials and has done a very thorough investigation. Okay, so what's what are the numbers then? What did he come up with or what is the economic benefit uh, to WA if cannabis was legalised? Well, the bottom line uh, over a four-year forward estimates is $1.25 billion, which is not a, not a small sum. So can you break that down? Well, there's two parts. One is what would you uh, not spend and what would you then uh, save? Uh, we've got the, the tax you'd get from legalizing, from franchising, from uh, licensing. That's one hand. And on the other, reduced costs in policing, in the courts, and in the corrective services. So that all comes together to around about uh, about $250, $300 million per year we could save. Okay, which then goes to $1.25 billion uh, over mm. five years. And, and four, did, four years. Uh, over four years, sorry. And, and did, he, did he look at other jurisdictions that have gone down this path as, as a way of uh, working out what's what? Is, is, was that part? of this modelling? Well, he had to, because when I ask in Parliament, they do have no figures whatsoever. They may take it seriously, they say, but they haven't actually checked it. They haven't got the figures. So we had to look internationally in America, Canada, Europe as well, uh, as well as looking across Australia at the research that they've done for the criminal aspects of what's the actual load. And it turns out that um, 11% of us use uh, cannabis daily, and over a a third of people have used cannabis in their lifetime, Uh, a lot more than than, than, than smoking. Thank goodness, I'm a detest smoking, Um, uh, not as much as alcohol, but 78% of people are using alcohol. So what sort of figures uh, did he use in terms of the percentage of people that would be in the marketplace in WA and how often they would buy if this indeed uh, was legalised? Well, he did a very extensive uh, research on this with uh, very complicated figures, and it turns out that, uh, first of all, our remote regional and indigenous populations are far higher users of cannabis. Uh, They've had to use estimates like, for example, drinking water, uh, when they say wastewater, when they look for for drugs just to assess what's going on. Those are the figures we've had to rely on as an approximation of how many people are taking it, followed by a lot of studies, you know, annual studies, when they anonymously ask people, what are your habits? Uh, taking drugs and these are the the results we've actually put together it's never been brought together in one volume before though so this is actually as i said fairly groundbreaking now i understand um you also uh, brought to the table something called risk premium associated with cannabis sales can you run us through this well, that's an economic term, actually, uh, and it was quite new to me at the time. Now, what happens is if you are a criminal uh, and you are producing an illicit substance, you have a risk there that the police may stop you. Your, your goods may be confiscated, they, they may be lost or damaged, and uh, so you've got to actually put a price on that. Uh, what is the value of me being at risk from police action? And so the risk premium is what actually happens when, when criminals uh, take this product to the market and they need to make a charge for that to, to cover their, their losses. So given that your economic modelling shows over a billion dollars uh, economic benefit to the state over forward estimates over, over four years, and now the McGowan government have shown no signs at all of wanting to go down this path, do you think this could sway them one iota? 
Well, you know, politicians, you can, you can laugh about it, but money and power are two things that politicians tend to listen to. Now, the, the scientific argument that cannabis is safer, that uh, by legalizing or indeed decriminalizing, we'd have much better social circumstances. By, by medicalizing, you could actually have people access the health system rather than being ostracized and criminalized. So they're not going to listen to that. Maybe they'll listen to the economic figures. I doubt it, but we've got to try. And speaking of trying, uh, I mean, is it all or nothing uh, with your push? I mean, we, we, oh, did, no. we did have decriminalisation for small amounts uh, for a period here in WA. Is, is that the first step uh, you'd be better off going for? Well, it's a possible first step. It is, in fact, part of the Labour Party's state policy programme, the one that McGowan refuses to follow for whatever reason. I, I just can't uh, grasp it. But it's actually part of the old Labour Party policy uh, that they're going to decriminalise uh, cannabis. So I don't understand why they're not doing it. Now, given that you're, you're coming to the table uh, with economic analysis, uh, is that an admission of, of some sort that you, you can't win the argument on other grounds? Oh, not at all. It's simply adding more f uh, fuel to the fire, if you like. I am a medical practitioner, and for me, harm minimization is what has to happen. I I'm an avid anti-smoker. That includes cannabis, by the way, but I'm very much in favor of harm minimization and uh, giving my patients access to a healthy approach to managing their, their physical and mental wellness. Uh, now, if the government's not going to listen to my medical arguments, perhaps they'll listen to the economic, and we'll keep on putting more and more evidence forward. Every term in Parliament, I'm putting forward papers which support the, the thesis that cannabis is actually safe. And so, uh, bit by bit, I have to say that most of my uh, colleagues in the House actually agree with me, but they don't dare say so. When you say every term you'll be putting forth more arguments, do, do you believe mm. you'll get another term, uh, given that uh, the rules have changed now and you need more of the, the primary vote to get in? Well, look, as far as you can be certain about such things, I, I do believe you have a shot at a second term in Parliament. But also the question is, is the population happy with what's happening with government right now? Is truth an important part of government now? I don't think it is. Is freedom an important part of our uh, Parliament? I don't think that the government currently looks at truth and freedom the way I do. So I would be hoping that the people listen to what we're saying and say, yes, we agree with you. We will vote for you. And also, by the way, we support legalisation of cannabis or at least decriminalisation. We'll leave it there. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Brian Walker. So he is the uh, the leader of the Legalised Cannabis Party in WA. Uh, so there's uh, two in the upper house in WA, this term of parliament. Uh, so he's got someone from the UWA's business school to do economic analysis of the benefit, economic benefit uh, to WA on legalising uh, cannabis. So over a billion dollars over the next four years uh, was the result um, a bit of shade being thrown at it uh, on the text line. Uh, I'll phrase it that way. Uh, this from Charlie, though, re-legalising cannabis. It may be a good idea to have a look at the effects on society of legislation and jurisdictions, such as in various states in the USA. It's not good. Uh, that's from uh, Charlie. Now, we did try, uh, because uh, we've spoken to him uh, once or twice before, we did try and get a uh, former... A Labor Premier in WA, Jeff Gallup, uh, on because he's very much of the opinion uh, that there should be decriminalisation of things like uh, cannabis. We weren't able to get through to him uh, today. Uh, this on the text line, what's the figures on helping smokers uh, with cancer, uh, with mental health, with loss of income from lazy workers, plus the rest of us got to put up with dangerous workability, plus worst of all, mood swings, grumpiness when not on it. Not a fan. Um... And then Angus says, I think it sounds good to legalise cannabis and then cut welfare off at the same time. Good idea, says uh, Angus. Um, and Mark, who's in Caballing, says, don't know what the beaches are like in Amsterdam, but people from all around the world go there to check out the cannabis in a legal environment. Imagine the tourism potential here, uh, writes uh, Mark. Uh, thank you.